everybody! Welcome to episode number 502 of this here electronic engineering podcast called Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry. Brought to you by eejournal.com and written, produced, and hosted by yours truly, Amelia Dalton. How about some high-performance DSPs to spice up your Friday? Maybe with a sprinkling of robots? Oh yes, my friends, we're talking about all of this and more. My guest is Dave Bell from Cadence Design Systems, and we're chatting about the trends driving the need for high-performance DSPs today, and how the Tensilica Con-X 110 and 120 DSPs can help you with your next design. Also this week, I check out some new drones that can build houses. Yes, you heard me right build houses. So first up, high performance DSPs with Dave Bell. Let's go. Hi, Dave. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Okay. So we're talking about communications today and particularly high performance DSPs. But Dave, let's set the stage here. What are you seeing are some of the trends specifically in LIDAR, radar, and communication driving the need for these high-performance DSPs? So there's a few things that are really driving the need for higher performance while keeping energy low, but the main thing would be, you know, effectively high data rates as well as low latency response to the data being processed. If we were to look at radar in particular, for example, there's a need to, especially in things like automotive and mobile equipment that's using radar sensing, there's a need to track high-precision objects that are moving quickly. There's a need to support multiple antennas. So all these things are really driving complex processing in the embedded system. So I've read about the new Tensilica Con-X 110 and 120 DSPs. So talk to me a little bit about those and how they extend Cadence's existing Con-X portfolio. Sure. So maybe just to put it in the context of the overall Tensilica portfolio as well, we do have multiple families of DSPs. So Connex is one. We have several that are tailored for different application spaces, including audio and speech processing, vision processing, and the radar and communications processing of which Connex is the family. Each of those is actually built on a common scalar CPU architecture. And all of the products allow a lot of configurability to the customer that's going to put it into an SOC where they can select from pre-configured, fully verified options, and they can also define their own through the Tensilica instruction extension language, their own data types, their own custom instructions to really tailor the core to their needs. So the Connex family itself has an instruction set that we've actually built using the Thai language ourselves, geared towards radar, LIDAR, different wireless communication standards in an optimal way. And so the customer can leverage those cores and extend it if they wish or use them by default. The way the 110 and the 120 in particular fit into the Connex family is they round out the lower performance end of the family itself. So we have 40 SP products within the Connex family that effectively have the same instruction set and the same key options. The main difference between them is the vector width of the data to be processed each cycle. So the family would range from a 128-bit vector width up to a 512-bit vector width. So the 110 and 120 or at the low end of that, 128 and 256 bits. Okay, so Dave, talk to me about the benefits that these Connex DSPs bring to customers. The benefit would be highly efficient programming with a degree of flexibility. So the programmability side, one is tailoring the core, as I mentioned, which is before someone really programs the full application, but they can tailor the cores to take the features they want based on the application as well as add their own special sauce at the hardware level. They are fully programmable engines. So once the core is delivered, they're programmable using standard C. And we also offer a family of libraries as well that will assist with some of the more typical math functions and do them in a highly efficient way. But the processors really bring high performance at low energy. And for the radar and communication space, high performance really means processing complex data very quickly. So in the communication space, a lot of times the data can be quantized down to a 16-bit representation, but it's still complex, meaning real and imaginary pairs that need to undergo a lot of multiply accumulate type of operations. And we do that very efficiently processing the vectorized data 
in a pipeline fashion with a high degree of throughput. The specific advantage that the 110 and 120 bring actually piggybacks on some new things that were introduced back when the higher end, the B10 and B20 were introduced a couple of years ago, where we've extended the number of vectorized data types that are supported over the previous generation. And so we can support a highly efficient processing of complex data that's represented in 16-bit as well as 32-bit integer formats. We can process half precision, single precision, or even double precision floating point. And all of that programmability and flexibility allows customers to tailor the application and use the higher precision, which also require a higher number of bits in the data set. Use that only when needed. So they get to basically select the uh, precision and dynamic range of the application, and it can vary through different stages of the program. Okay, so let's talk about ISA compatibility between these new DSPs and the Connex B10 and B20 DSPs. Why is that important? Yes. So there's a couple of reasons why that's of an advantage. One is for Cadence and for our partners, it lets us more quickly release libraries and software solutions that span the full family. So they can be ready almost at the same time because we can write it once and it works across the products. For the customer that's consuming it, there's that advantage as well. And there's somewhat two scenarios that I would highlight. One would be a product could be developed and deployed at, you know, say one of the lower end capacity DSPs. So Say the initial product is using the Connex 110, and then the customer decides that for the next generation, they need higher performance. They want to move to the Connex 120 or even up to the B20 for higher throughput, but they don't actually really need to rewrite the application. Everything will work just being recompiled for the new target. They can add new features, and that would take new coding as well, but the base application can very seamlessly migrate from one to the next. And then the other flavor of that would be someone who might be developing multiple versions of the same product at the same time. So one application can be built onto a low-end as well as high-end version of the Connex DSP at the same time without really customizing the code itself. All right. Well, Dave, I think it's time for your off-the-cuff question. So, Dave, since you haven't been on my show before, I'm going to give you our standard off-the-cuff here at Fish Fry. So if you could have one meal right now, it doesn't matter if the restaurant is closed, you need a passport to get there. Heck, it's made by your grandmother. What would you have? Ooh, made by my grandmother threw in a, a little twist on what I thought I was going to answer, but I'll, I'll say made by my mother. And uh, her pot roast is probably one of my uh, kind of go-to meals from growing up. I love it. <laughs> Excellent. Well, Dave, thank you so much for joining me. It was a pleasure having you today. Great. Thank you very much, Mila. I appreciate it. What if drones could build your house? I mean, drones delivering groceries. Sure. Drones fighting fires. Absolutely. But drones building my house? What the? So yes, my friends, a multinational team of researchers from Imperial College London's Department of Aeronautics and the Materials and Technology Center of Robotics at EMPA, or Swiss Federal Laboratories of Material Science and Technology, have developed a new kind of 3D printed drone that can work together as a team to build and repair structures while flying. Yes, you heard me right, while flying. And the inspiration for these cooperative building while flying machines? Bees. So the key here is that these drones are actually built using the same blueprint, a system called Aerial Additive Manufacturing, or Aerial AM. So the Aerial AM actually uses both 3D printing and path planning frameworks. This is to ensure that the drones can adapt to the changes in the shape as the construction progresses. So the drones at the heart of this system consist of build drones, which are in charge of depositing material in flight, and the scan drones, whose job it is to continually measure the output of the build drones and to also tell them what next to do. And yes, they are fully autonomous in flight, but there is also a human controller that is able to monitor the progress of these drones and intervene if need be. The testing that this team did in working with these drones was pretty cool. 
First, they developed four cement-like mixtures that these drones could work with. During the building process, all in real time, the drones would assess the printed geometry and then change their behavior to make sure they were building to the proper specifications. And how close did they get to these specs? Well, they had a manufacturing accuracy of just 5 millimeters. And in the proof of concept design, this team was able to create a 72 layer 2.05 meter cylinder with a special foam material and was also able to create a 28 layer 18 centimeter cylinder with a cement like material. Professor Mirko Kovac of Imperial's Department of Aeronautics, who led this study, says this about the future of these drones. He says, We've proved the concept that drones can work autonomously and in tandem to construct and repair buildings at least in the lab. This scalable solution could help construction and repair in difficult to reach areas, like tall buildings. So the next step for this team will be to work with different construction companies to validate these solutions and provide manufacturing and repair capabilities. This team believes that this technology could not only reduce access risks compared to traditional building methods, but also contribute to a huge cost savings as well. Can you imagine these kind of drones creating buildings in post-disaster relief construction? Or in hard-to-access places of the world? Or even super-tall buildings or bridges? Yeah, I can too. So if you want even more information about these super cool building drones, I've included a couple links below the player on this week's fish frying page on eejournal.com and in the description of the YouTube video as well. Hey, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? Well, you should. You can find us at facebook.com slash EE Journal. If you're into Twitter, you can monitor our tweets at EE Journal TFM. And don't forget, if you would like to follow my personal Twitter account, check out Amelia D. 1978. And hey, if LinkedIn is more your thing, sure, I dig it. You can follow us or me on LinkedIn as well. And we have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash eejournal. Folks, it is chock full of all sorts of techie videos, including our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series and a selection of fish fry podcasts as well. Also, you can subscribe to our EE Journal YouTube channel, too. Also, by clicking the links below the player on this week's Fish Frying page, you can subscribe to this here podcast through Spotify, Podbean, or Apple Podcasts. And remember, if you'd like to further support this podcast, please leave me a review on that podcasting platform of your choice. It really does help. Also, if you'd like any further information about the stories covered in today's show, just head on over to eejournal.com and look for this week's Fish Frying page. Thank you everyone for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology or heck you just want to chat, shoot me a line at Amelia, that's A-M-E-L-I-A, at eejournal.com or post a comment on our forums on eejournal. For the week of October 7th, 2022, I'm Amelia Dalton, and you've been fried.